Hello, hello, from me to you. Hello, hello, how do you do? Hello, hello, from me to you. Hello, hello, how do you do? Well, welcome, everybody. <laughs> Uh, well, we are here as uh, preschool educators and Christian ministry educators to the preschool age, and uh, it's, uh, it's a very fun age, and it's a very challenging age, and it's, uh, but it's also just such um, an incredible age where children are such sponges, I think we know. And that's a song that I always start our day with when we, uh, the children come in. We come into circle time, and we greet each other, and... Uh, some days you're smiling and inside you're like, mm, I don't know about this day. And so I was thinking, what do we need? What do we need in our day? We need prayer. Prayer is so important. And I think especially working with preschoolers, prayer is of utmost importance for our lives. So I thought, well, what does prayer mean? I mean, prayer is, we all know what prayer is. We pray and we ask. But with that, I think, especially working with preschool children, we need to pray for patience with each other, with the children, with their families. We need to pray for respect, respecting one another, the families and their opinions, their values, because we have so many different dynamics that we're working with, as you know. We need to pray for an awareness of what's going on around them, around them and around us and around that child and what's affecting them. And we also need to pray for our attitude. How are we responding to that and to our families and, and to that child who's kicking you, who's hitting you, spitting at you, and sometimes using language that is not appropriate. And yourself really being filled. And also praying for effectiveness. How are we being effective into our families and into those children? And how are we responding into uh, situations. The Lord gave me two words about three years ago, responding and reacting. And I, this is kind of a side note from my notes here, and it's just about in life we come across things and come across situations and uh, with families and with children in particular. And the Lord spoke to me and it's like, how are you responding to that family? What are you thinking? What are you doing? How are you thinking about them? And so I thought, I don't want to react. I want to respond well and respond appropriately to that family and to those children in what's going on. Because unbeknownst to us, what's going on behind the scenes is affecting them in their day and in the classroom and what they're bringing in with them. So that's why we need prayer. Prayer is of utmost importance. And I'm thankful because the Lord blessed me with a mom who was a, a woman of prayer. And uh, that was one thing that was instilled into my heart. And I love to pray, and I love to teach children to pray. And I think it's important. And we'll come into that a little bit later. So I just want to get a little bit of a kind of an overall where we're at. Um, obviously, it's about preschool. And I know some people are, I think I talked to a couple ladies, and they are actual preschool educators. And I just wanted to know, who are preschool educators within a preschool setting? Within a church, okay, yeah. It can be in a church or outside the church. Put your hand up, don't be shy. It's okay, pick me, pick me. Okay, so you're all early childhood educators. Okay, fabulous. And so then the rest of the crowd that is uh, children's ministries with preschool age groups. So, awesome, good. Well, we have fun. And it's interesting how the Lord brings us into working with children. I've always been working with children. This is my home church, and so I was always in the former church line Pentecost. I was teaching Sunday school and here as well. And then all of a sudden the Lord said, okay, you're going to go teaching. And so here I am. And you always think, okay, okay, Lord. And it's incredible, the ministry that it is, because it's interesting, and I'm sure you get this as well, where people say, I don't know how you do that. How do you work with those kids day in and day out? And even the parents coming in, how do you do this day in and day out? And again, it's prayer. I'm going to keep coming back to that, because it's only through prayer that we can be effective and do that. So um, we know that children, we are imparting to them. At this age, they are like little sponges. 
And uh, they are our next generation, as those words are out. They're our future. And we're equipping them and we're instilling them values and truths. But how do we do that at such a young age? And what is it that we're incorporating into um, our day-to-day -day, uh, curriculum, if you're early child educators, and also within our Sunday School program? So I'm going to kind of go between the two. Um, just the focus was on the early childhood preschool and how to be spiritually effective. And so how are we effective? And how are we effectively equipping them? And uh, what does that mean? What do you think that means? How are we affecting them? How are we doing that? Just throw out some words. How do we affect children? Hmm? Yeah? Our tone of voice, yeah. Pardon me? Yes, examples, exactly. Those are great words, that's right. And um, we're also instilling patience. We're wanting to instill perseverance and we're pursuing with them. We're pursuing things of values. We realize that children are very precious. They are sponges, they absorb, they want to learn, they desire to learn and it's just such a fun age, like I'm gonna keep saying that because they just look up at you and they just look at what you're saying and they just take that in and they just take it into their hearts and they're just like little sponges. And so we have to be so aware of that, of what we're doing and what we're instilling into them is being imparted into their spirits. And that's why it's so important. They're innocent, they trust and they believe. And it's up to us to create that environment for them and to develop their own faith and understanding and to help them realize who Jesus is. We want to instill truths and promises into them because this then is going to go from the classroom, be it Sunday school or within the preschool, is then going to go into, um, into the homes is what's going on. How do we equip ourselves? We are praying. We're praying for the preschoolers and the families. We're praying for their situations and they're um, being aware of that and is building that trust with the families. And uh, when you're working with them, it takes a bit of time to develop those uh, relationships and that trust that um, they first have to kind of see you and then they build that trust. Because like I was saying, when they do come to you, they're going to look for something. So it's respecting, and sometimes you might hear some things that you're not, maybe you don't agree with, or perhaps you're not, um, yeah, you're not agreeing with, I guess is the word. And so it just is a very different lifestyle or values. So it's respecting them and their situation, but also loving on them. And uh, being aware of the children's needs, and like I was saying, the effects that it has on the family um, the effects of that is on the child comes from the family and their environment. And so we're being effective to them in how we uh, interact with them and with their families. And when we pray, it helps us then to focus on the Christian principles in our relationships with the children, their families, our staff, and it's loving God and loving people and loving others. And it's sharing how much God loves them and cares deeply for them. It's sharing the aroma of Christ. And that, again, is coming through being filled with him and praying. So how do we demonstrate that? How do we demonstrate that? How do we demonstrate the aroma of Christ? Any answers or any thoughts? How do we do that? Within a preschool, how would you do that? How do we... Um, uh, share the aroma of Christ or love on the children? How do we do that? What are some ways that we can do that within our preschool age? Exactly, exactly. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any other oh, thoughts? So that, Donna, if we're going up the wrong way on the slide, mm -hmm. you say, oh, um, Susie, we're going upstairs and then we go down the stairs. 
slide this way and, you know, correcting. It's not reacting. It's how we're responding to the children. That's right. It's demonstrating in the day, uh, the day to day our families and our parents. So within a, a preschool, um, I'm currently teaching at a church in Victoria, and uh, I taught here for many years. So we have children that were both church families and non-church families. So how do you bring spirituality within that into the curriculum and into the program? And uh, respect the families that are non-church and are a little nervous coming in, because you do have families that are coming in and they may see the curriculum end of things and the programming that you're doing, but then what are you gonna teach my child? And the number one answer, or sorry, excuse me, the number one question that I always get is, are you religious? Are you gonna teach religion? Well, I don't like that word. Because <laughs> obviously, religion is not what we're teaching. We want to instill life skills and values, and that's what we're doing, be it in the sunny school, be it within the preschool is what we're doing. And so when I talk to the families, I say to the families, we're looking at the whole child. We're not just looking at the academics, because when you're teaching preschool, they're always looking, well, is my child gonna read and write and do all these things and be ready? And I'm like, yes, that is a component of what we're teaching. But the most important thing, in my opinion, and this is me sharing to the families, is that we're instilling life values and skills, which is really what you're touching on, the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, uh, self-control, all those things. Because all those things, what we're teaching is then being incorporated into life skills. So when you start to break that down, the families, they're kind of like, oh, oh. I mean, I don't use the word the fruits of the spirit because they'd be like, I'm out of here, you know. And, um, but when they realize that we're teaching values and skills, unbeknownst to them, it's actually Christ is what we're teaching them, but it's done. But how do we do that? Because if we're not teaching Bible and we're not doing the Sunday school stories per se, then how do we do that? And so when we are um, we're teaching, we're incorporating it into all of um, our curriculum. And for instance, in the fall, I always do a, a unit called Wonderful Me or I Am Special. And I mean, it's so much fun doing all the different units when you're teaching preschool because you can thread it through so easily and just reflect it too. And our responsibility is to, to make children aware. And I think when non-church families are coming within to uh, the preschool, they're a little uh, worried that perhaps you're going to you know, teach them theology or teach them some kind of a doctrine. And it's not, you know, it's just making them aware. And so his, um, for instance, when we do the unit, I am special, we talk about, I have the kids just kind of all look at each other and we pass around a mirror and, and we do a chart and I just have, all the children have black hair, all the children have brown hair and, and blonde hair and red hair. Who has blue eyes? And they're like, it's quite cute because they're all looking at each other and comparing and I get them to look at each other and just get that interaction going with them. And then, then we say, who's taller and who's a little bit not as tall and stuff is my phrasing how I do it. So it's kind of fun. They all stand beside each other and do their thing and they get their measuring tape and so with that we're talking about how we're made look at your friend they have blonde hair they have black hair you have brown eyes but I said you all have eyes we all have hair and etc but I says look at yourself now look at your friend do they look the same and they're like, of course, no. And I says, no, because you're made special. I says, we all have eyes and brown eyes or blue eyes, whatever. And so helping them to recognize that their friend is the same, but they're also unique and special in their own way. And uh, I just love that because just discovering, it's like, oh, I'm special. And then I have a song that I teach the kids and it's called, it goes, I'm special, I am special, I am very special, God has made me special, yes I am. And I do that even with, you know, the non-church families because I just, that's what we do and they're okay with that. Once we kind of get over that whole religion thing and not teaching the theology to the children in a Bible school course, you know, that we're just teaching values in life and they want their children to be instilled with truth and with values and to know that their children are treasured and loved. So there's a 
so that song, we sing that one, and each unit I have a song that we, we learn, quite a few songs. But anyways, I'll never forget the story. This was back here at Sunbeam when I was teaching, and uh, there was a little girl. This is probably about 12 years ago now, but anyways, and uh, I had the families all come in, and we just kind of did a recap of the month and did some of the songs, and this is one of the songs that I sang with the children, and it's I am special, I am special, yes I am. God made me very special, I am special. Anyways, this, so they're singing away, these kids, and this little girl just turns around and she said, let me just back up for a moment. So they're a bit of a, can I use the word, a little bit of a rough family, and uh, just a lot of stuff going on in their life, if I can use those words, and just, you know, again, that's, it's walking along, it's being aware and of their attitude and what's going on, and just how are we responding to that family, and it's speaking that truth into that child. And so... The little girl just whips around and she said, Mom, and she just yells, See, I told you God made me special. And I just burst into tears and I was just like, This is what it's all about. Because she's declaring the truth of who God made her and God made her special. And she's, yeah, a little unique because some of her friends were like, Hmm, because she's a little bit rough and was a little bit aggressive at times. And you know, I just thought, yeah, you got it. You've got it. God has made you special. And that's our role, and this is what we need to do. And we need to instill that truth. And uh, so just continuing on, like with the different units that we can do within the uh, preschool um, spectrum, I incorporate it into um, our space theme and into our health and nutrition, all the different units. And I, um, I sing a lot of songs, and it's just very, sim very familiar songs, for instance, about how the universe and how God made the universe and about the stars, and just putting that into there. And then the kids are starting to recognize, because I'll challenge them, and again, getting them to think, well, where did the stars come from? How did they get there? You know, just sort of asking those kind of questions. And really, it's kind of what um, Megan was talking about this morning, in the sense where, you know, we're, we're challenging them and we're challenged and I want to challenge children. And that's our role is to challenge the children. It's not giving them a faith. It's sharing the faith and the love of Jesus and allowing them to experience it for themselves. So it's being that um, collaborator with Christ, if I can say that word, and, and just really creating that environment and challenging them. Kids love questions. They love questions. They love knowledge, but they love questions. And they love to like put their hand up, especially preschoolers. They're like, they don't care. And then they're just putting their hands up and they're just like, pick me, pick me. And you know, and it's fine. You know, and it's great because if they say, I don't know, um, they say the wrong answer. I can't think of one right now. I should have a book for all the different things over the years. But anyways, you know, even if it's the wrong answer or the incorrect answer, that's okay. We're challenging them. We're creating an environment for them to think and to think beyond what we're telling them because it's going to then give them strength and the ability to stand up for what's true later in life and what values they have and what they believe. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, praying, going back to that, uh, it's one of the things that I love doing with the children. And I think it's such a wonderful way for pre like a love, just to love. And praying is a, such a treasure. And like I was saying, it's very dear to my heart, hence uh, my emphasis here. But it's also giving that to the children, making them aware of who God is. And that God is not just somebody for their mom or their dad or the teacher or um, the grown-up, whatever. It's for them. And I love being able to say to the children that, you know what, you can talk to God just like you're talking to me or like you talk to your peers. And they're kind of like, huh? And I said, it's easy. I said, you can say, hi, God. And, you know, they'll do that. And so it's up to us to lead them and to teach them because we're teaching them. And it's giving them the words and just saying, dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for my friends. And again, asking them, challenging them. What are you thankful for? What do you want to pray for? 
Do you have an owie? Well, you get everything. You've got the scratch, you've got the bobble, you've got the band-aid, you've got a scratch from last month and stuff <laughs> that they're bringing up and everything. But that's okay because patience. You know, and prayer time can take a bit of time, but that's okay because you know what? That's a lesson right there before you get into the rest of your lesson. The lesson is that Papa hears them and he loves them and he cares for them. And so it's quite fun when you do start to teach them those words in the beginning because of course we're role modeling that. And then you start, to, over the year, you'll start to see them, okay, it's your turn to pray. And then you can hear them. Dear Jesus, and then they say the little prayer. So it's very precious when you, you know, you instill that, and when you um, then have them start to do it just on their own. And so, and it's, yeah, and it's just really instilling. And I think that's that's one thing that's so important in this age is that we're instilling for them truth and value and uh, their ability to think on their own. And uh, going over to the fruits of the spirit, or continuing, it's teaching respect and care for one another. And that's done in the day-to-day -day with all of the interaction. It's teaching care for one another, their peers, their teachers, their parents, things that are around them, their environment. So how? It's in that day-to-day. -day. It's problem solving, and it's helping each other. Our role, like I was saying, is to help children to acknowledge and to recognize, and to recognize how their friends are feeling. The fruits of the spirit, kindness and gentleness, patience, self-control, sharing. And kindness, how do we do that? How do we break that down for a child? That's a very big word, kind. You know, I have parents say, was my child good today? I'm like, that's a really big word. How do we break that down, you know? And so kindness is, is breaking that down for the child and helping them understand that when they're helping a friend or when they're sharing or when they're doing these activities that this is being kind, that they're sharing Jesus with the children. And not necessarily, because I understand within a secular preschool, you can't always use those words. But of course, it is um, using the words, or oh, you're being a good friend, or you're being very kind. Like You can even use those words because you're declaring those words of the scriptures. And so, for instance, um, you know, when the children are arguing over a toy or anything like that, which I'm sure we have at that age, that's always fun, because all of a sudden, especially with preschool, they coming, they're coming from maybe themselves at home or maybe a younger sibling, and then all of a sudden there's like 19 or 20 other children. Well, who are you and why are you taking what I want? And so it's helping them to recognize that there's other people around them and to be kind. Again, life skills, values. And so ways that we do this is that they're both grabbing at something. So of course you're intervening and you're role modeling that for the child. So you're going to go and intervene and you know, you say, I see that you both are wanting this toy and you break that down for them. And then when you know, you have that broken down, it comes to that place where the children are able to talk with each other and you have to help them with that. So for instance, what I would do is I would say, oh, I see you're wanting a turn with that. Well, what can you say to that friend? And they're like, I don't know. And so my turn or grabbing it, but it's given them the words to say, when is it my turn? When can I have that book or when can I have that car or shovel or whatever it might be? And so that is giving them those words. And then from that, that's also teaching them, or so then from there, that child will then say, well, in two minutes, you can have a turn. And so that's teaching that other child patience is what you're doing. And so, so then the children are playing and doing their thing. And then you're recognizing that child that's waiting and saying, oh, you're being very patient. You're being very kind and not going and bothering your friend. You're being very kind. And so, and it's also helping them to recognize and they feel very excited like, oh, I'm being, and you're a good friend and I'm being kind and, you know, and so for them, they're starting to understand that, those fruits of the spirit. And then from there, of course, when the two minutes is up, because you have to intervene and say, okay, two minutes is finished, is now so-and-so's turn to come and play with. So it's saying thank you to my friend that has then shared that toy. And so again, it's recognizing that both of them have been kind, they've been patient, and that they are really good friends. 
Gentleness. How are they to be gentle? Well, we know that with our four-year-olds, three-year-olds, and preschools, preschool age, hands and feet are a very big part of communication. <laughs> And so maybe many of you have been on the receiving end of a hand or a foot or something like that. It's always lots of fun. And that's where you need to like, how am I going to respond to this child that keeps kicking me and spitting at me or using foul language at me. And, and again, it's praying for patience and it's being aware of our attitude and how we're responding to that child. And so gentleness is using the words being gentle hands and children generally are understanding that are your hands being helpful or are they being hurtful again is getting them to think about what they're doing are they being helpful or hurtful to their friends are your hands going to um, to help this friend and uh, so really making them aware and thinking about what they're doing and helping them to remind them that hands are for helping not hurting feet are for you know, helping and walking, but not for kicking friends and what have you. And, um, and then I think also when a child has hit or kicked, it's making them aware of their friend's feelings. And so what I will do is if a child has hit or has kicked a child or something like that, um, or said something that has hurt their friends, I always want that child to before because immediately we always want to say well go say your story well what am i sorry for i wanted that toy and that's what my main focus was and so why are you making me say sorry for wanting something i want so my rule of thumb is that again it's making them aware making a child think about what that has happened to that peer and so in doing that i'll go into the situation and i'll comfort the child and i'll have the other friend who was the uh, kicker or hitter and I'll just say come let's go see if our friends okay and so I'll say to that little friend I'll say ask so-and-so are you okay that's first and most important and so to say are you okay and it's recognizing what have I done and so if the child is sad and they're they'll say maybe they're not sure and so then I'll say well look at their face what is their face telling you does their face look happy does it look sad? Is it excited? You know, again, making them to think. What have you know, understanding what they've done, but they're recognizing, my friend looks a little sad right now. They're crying. And I'll say, well, do you know why they're crying? And sometimes they'll get it with their four, but sometimes when they're three, they're not always at that place yet. Like I said, they're focused on that toy, whatever they want. They're going to do whatever they want to get what they want. And so, I will say they're sad and I sometimes will ask, have that child say, why are you sad? And then that child can respond. So again, it's the communication because we're wanting the kids to communicate. Again, life skills, communication are, is important for life skills, learning how to talk to each other properly and respecting each other and hearing each other and responding appropriately. So that child may say, you hurt me, and then you, again, breaking it down, why did you hurt, and what's hurt, and that kind of thing. And so if they've hit, well, you hit me. So then I'll get that child to say, well, did you like that? No. You know, so then you get them to say, I didn't like that. That really hurt my body. Or those words made me feel really sad. You know, that hurt my heart. You know, so again, it's, it's facilitating and giving them those skills that they're needing in order to communicate well and effective and also to bring that place of gentleness into the situation and then again reaffirming and speaking life into that child who maybe had hit or done what have you just saying thank you for being a good friend and for being gentle and helping and being there to uh, to facilitate that between them does that make sense okay good Again, it's just recognizing and role modeling that for them. So, self-control, that's another one. That's a really big one. And I think, again, it goes into, um, into teaching children self-control. And I think it kind of ties into with the hands and the feet. But it's also, it's helping them to recognize what their words and actions have done. 
and uh, facilitating that for them. And we want to instill and teach independent thinking, wise choices, and responsibility. It's teaching and developing positive social interactions with love and respect. And we demonstrate that to the children, like we talked about earlier in the day, how we love on them and respect them, and how we um, respond to each other as a staff. And at times when it's a little chaotic in the classroom, it's busy and maybe the kids are a little crazy, and perhaps how are we responding to them and how are we responding to our coworkers as well. Responsibility as well and uh, with the cleanup and with their words and with their actions and with their personal care. How do we do that? Well, we're role modeling that. We're role modeling that and we're encouraging that with them. And uh, going back to prayer, um, it's gratitude and gratefulness. It's teaching and praying that God loves to hear them and uh, he wants to, to listen to them. And love, love is another fruit of the spirit. Kids love so easily. They love so easily and they accept whatever, very often what's going on, but unbeknownst to us, do we know what's going on? And with that, it's loving on the children and the families and their needs, and it's being observant of that or aware, like I was saying earlier. I have an example of a family and and again, um, how do we put this into um, these values and the love of Christ without actually saying those words? And I think what I was saying, how we emanate the love of Christ, and a lot of times it's just going right alongside a family. And uh, we have a family at uh, the preschool where I'm at right now, and they had a very serious family tragedy and uh, where the dad is now uh, a quadriplegic and what have you and so it of course really affected the child of the family and how she was reacting and what she was bringing into the classroom and what have you and her whole environment and world was changed and it's been it's been a very challenging year for us you know as a staff because uh, that child is a bolter and just will run is very aggressive to her peers and to the staff and just very difficult and you know there's days you're like I need prayer because I'm getting kicked and all these things and so and it's praying for the patients and respecting where she's coming from and all of that and so with that you know you work with the families and that um, that is key when we're working with families and how we're responding to what's going on and so in talking with the mom um, you know just opening that door and just saying the simple words we care how can I help you what can we do and I know that's very obvious for all of us you know just to walk alongside of that but the words that when it's coming through from the heart, truly from the heart, it speaks volumes without saying anything. And I think we know that that's so obvious. And so just working with the family and just being there and had a meeting, I was wanting to offer uh, if they needed to have some support in regards to some counseling and what have you because the little child has been talking quite a lot about her daddy and where he's at and how she's embarrassed about her daddy and all of these and she's four years old and thinking wow she's got a lot and so working with that so that in turn is then affecting her in her day and what's going on so how do we do this so it's walking alongside of that so I phoned, phoned the mom and uh, I just started sharing and just saying, you know, if there's anything we can do, just know we're here, know we're here, because we're in a church. I said, we're here as a church, but also we have outside counseling. Is there anything that we can do? And I had some resources of some things for her child, um, for spe specifically for children and stuff like that, to have some therapy. And so with that, you know, um, just being able to offer that, and all of a sudden she just got silent and the conversation went on and then she just got silent and then she just burst into tears and I just let her, we were on the phone and the next thing she says, she goes, thank you, thank you. 
She goes, I thought you were phoning to ask me to leave and my child to leave because this child has been kicked out of dance, out of swimming lessons, out of all these things that they have been a part of. And I just, my heart broke. I started to cry on the phone too because it kind of was at that point where it was getting, some of the parents were starting to like, uh, you know, and it's working with this family and with the other families and working together and helping the children understand that. But when she said that, I was like, no. I says, we need to walk alongside. We'll walk alongside you. And she just said, what is it? You know, and from there, you know, I was able to share, well, Jesus loves you. You know, and it's again, like I was saying earlier, it's building that that rapport with the families and that trust with the families because they come to you. And there's times when, yeah, you're feeling a little flustered and flabbergasted by it all. But in the long run, over the course of well, it's been last year and into this year now of the preschool year, so it's taken quite some time to build that trust. But come to that place where I can say, I'm praying for you, and Jesus loves you. And you know, and then just the other day, she's like, oh. you know, so it's just, it's starting to happen. So that's our role. That's what we do. We walk alongside the families. We love on them. We show respect and care and understanding to them. And uh, we speak the words of life into them. And that little child, like, you know, some dreams of uh, how they're, behavior and I've had families say my child's a little devil or a little helium and I just think oh, that just breaks my heart because you know we need to speak words of life over the children we need to declare the truth and I think we can break that even over we don't need to sit there and pray like loud loud but I've just gone over to a child when they're working at a certain activity and we know that they're quite a distressed child or a challenging child and you're like, I don't have a lot of patience for you, but God, you've got to give it to me. And you know, they've been just really aggressive with their peers or whatever. So just going over to them and just not even touching them, but just starting to pray over them and pray in the spirit over them. And you'll be amazed at the, what happens within that child. I've seen it where you just start to pray over them and also praying as a staff for that child or the families, but just yourself, just going around the environment and in the room and just I've even anointed the doors and just when they come in they sense the presence of Jesus even if it's in a non-Christian setting you can still do that you can still pray that I have done that where and I've worked at another place and just to um, just to bring the presence of Jesus with you because he's in us so he, we're bringing it with us wherever we go and whenever we're touching we want to be vessels we want to be vessels we're praying, we're prayed in our spirit, we're full, so that we can then emanate Christ through our words, through our hands, and through our feet. And as we touch, that we be vessels for him. Yeah. All right. Oh, so yeah, it's emanating the love of Christ to our families, to the children. It's loving God, loving people, and loving others, and coming alongside. That demonstrates Christ's love and all we do. We only have a few minutes left. Does anybody have any questions at all or any thoughts or anything? Just feel free. Situations that you might have come across in the Sunday school room or within the preschool setting or anything like that? Um, how do you, like for myself, I hey. think wow. Because mm -hmm. a kid that's three or four. Yeah. Right. Sits, yeah. Think, how do you do it that it's relationship? You break it down for them yeah, in the sense of. More applicable, like. Yeah. I mean, it, it is. It's a very big word. It's a very broad word, I think, for children. And for them, again, they're innocent, yeah. you know, in that sense. So for me, when we're talking about a sin, um, just breaking it down to very simple. For, maybe they have. Um, and it's, it's a tricky one because you want to be very careful in how you say this, but again, at the same time, it's making them aware of some of their actions and what they're doing. And I would use the words, are you being kind? Are you being helpful? 
Do you think that's going to make your friend happy or sad? So sort of what I would do, or if they're grabbing something. Again, just making it more aware of it that way is what I would do, like for the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds. Um, and I've also used the illustration, um, you know, sometimes when we, we are not listening well or we're, um, yeah, not listening well, say to our mummies or our daddies, and I use that example. And I said, you know, sometimes we go outside and we jump in puddles, we kind of get dirty on us. We get mud puddle dirt on us or whatever. And I says, that's sort of like, you know what, when we disobey daddy, that makes Jesus sad. That makes God sad. And it's like we get a little bit of dirt on us. And so we need to, to wash our clothes. And so I say, we can always say, Jesus, I'm sorry. And just teaching them, Jesus, I'm sorry that I was grumpy or as mean or I didn't listen to mom and dad or I didn't do whatever it might be the situation so just kind of breaking it down into simple terms of what is appropriate and kind of age appropriate for them and I say you know what when we say Jesus I'm sorry you know what he does he's just like when you wash your hands or mommy washes your clothes after you jumped in the puddle it's all clean it's all gone and makes it all gone just very simple yeah let me just pray a blessing over you since that was what our focus was today. So Father, we thank you for the gift of children. Lord, as challenging and as uh, at times they can be, but how precious they are. Because you said, let the little children come unto me. So Father, you're the true example of how children can come and how precious they are in your sight. And so I thank you for each of these um, uh, these workers that have come and served so diligently either in the uh, Sunday school setting or within the preschool setting. And so, Father, I thank you that their hearts are for children because, um, Father, you have instilled that to them. So, Father, I pray a blessing over each of these workers, Father, from the tops of their heads to the very soles of their feet, that, Father, they would be equipped to, to serve well and to, um, to work with these young ones, these lives, as they're instilling truth, as they're instilling values, and as they're instilling your truth into their little spirits, Father. So I pray, God, that as they go about their different uh, lessons and all that, Father, you'd give them insight, you'd give them aware awareness, and that, Father, you would just give them such abundant blessing and the fulfilling into their spirits as they pour out into these little lives, Father. So just fill them as they give out, Lord God, and just refresh them and restore them and just bless them in all that they do, Jesus. In your precious name, amen.